Welcome to the You Can Be Unstoppable podcast. My name is Ewelina Szczeblewska, your host and certified hypnotherapist. In this podcast, I will share with you how to tap into the power of your subconscious mind. I intend to share with you how learning how to use the power of your subconscious mind can help you to create successful an abundant life with ease, how to connect with yourself while fostering a healthy relationship with your body and mind. Tapping into the power of the subconscious mind will help you to learn how to manage your emotions, become more resilient and present in all of your relationships. Self-love and self-worth are the keys to the kingdom of success and abundance, to happy and healthy life on your terms. Welcome. Today I want to talk about fear and why do we get into fear? Because I can see so much fear out there, not just right now and probably particularly right now but we do get into fear every single day and we spend most of our day in fear because we worry about money we worry how are we going to pay the next bill we worry about creating the career or success business getting more clients where will they come from we worry about kids Uh, We worry about becoming financially independent because we fear the judgment, what everyone else will see about us. So my question for you is, does fear stop you from creating the life of your dreams because you get into it so much? Because we fear so much. We fear reaching out to people. We fear speaking up, saying what we really think. We um, fear doing lives on social media if you have a business. You fear really be who you are. Maybe ask that guy on a date. There is so many fears that we do get into it. And for the most part, fear comes from two places. One, it comes from the brain. is a brain-based automatic response. Or it comes from your past, from your past conditioned fears because of what happened to you in the past. So I'm going to break apart the two types of the fears because they are kind of a little bit different, but the brain-based fears are underlying the both of them. So why do we get into fears coming from the more scientific side of things. So to give you you, you a simple explanation of how the brain works, we do have part of the brain that's called the reptilian brain. And it is by far the oldest part of our brain. And the main task of the reptilian brain is to maintain your survival. So it controls basic and vital bodily functions, such as breathing, balance, and temperature. And this part of the brain works subconsciously and instinctually. Instinctive, instinctu- oh my goodness, that's a hard word. Hard word for me, you know what I mean. We don't think about breathing, Um, your heart pumping, blood circulating, it all just happens. It's subconscious, it's automatic. Then we've got the limbic system, which developed in first mammals. And like the reptilian brain, its role is your survival, and it also operates subconsciously. It controls expression of emotions, body's response to danger, and the processing of short-term memory. 
We also have the neocortex, the cortex, the newest part of our brain. And it gives us the ability to engage in higher level of thinking. It gives us the ability to analyze, to use logic, to imagine, to plan. It's quite a sophisticated part of the brain and it involves conscious processes and is a much slower part of the brain. So it operates much slower than the subconscious brain, uh, like the reptilian brain and the limbic system. And then we've got the amygdala. And amygdala is a structure within the limbic system. It processes information from the senses as the processes asks question, is this safe? Amygdala doesn't wait for the uh, more sophisticated neocortex to give the response. So, you know, we face something and amygdala goes, okay, is this safe? And it doesn't wait for your logic, the cortex, to say, yes, it's fine. It just responds. It is designed to keep you alive. And if amygdala perceives particular situation or person as a threat, perceives it as a threat, immediately sets off the brain's alarm system, which we often call the fight or flight response. So that's the kind of more scientific look on how the brain operates. So when amygdala detects a threat and it can sense it with your eyes, smell, taste, uses one of the senses to sense the threat, it sends the signal to the brain and goes ding, 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 there's alarm going on, there's no time to waste, we need to respond. And it floods your body with a whole set of hormones, like adrenaline, which helps with the alert process, and it provides a quick boost of energy. Cortisol provides the body with a boost of energy, reduces um, sensation of pain, and systems which are not crucial to survival, to your immediate survival, are switched off, like your immune system. And this is really important. And then we've got oxytocin, which reduces blood pressure, calms the body down and is responsible for befriending during times of stress. So when your brain detects a threat, that's what's happening in your body. There is a whole host of hormones flooding your body. So the mind prepares a whole mind and body response to real or perceived threat. Because the number one job for the mind is your survival. And how you actually feel this in your body is different to everyone. So you may have heart rate increased. You may have a dry mouth, tunnel division, shaking, sweating. This whole host of different uh, physical elements that may show up at that time. So then you will go into one of the uh, stages you might fight, flight, freeze, but you can also friend, flop or faint. So this is the way the brain works. So you've got the four parts of the brain, the reptilian brain, the oldest part of the brain that is designed to keep you alive, the limbic system, which is um, body's response to danger, the neocortex, the newest part of the brain that is using logic, analyzing things, and amygdala, which analyzes everything that happens into our, in, in our life and asks the very important question. Is this safe? Do I need to react and prepare body's response to a real or perceived threat? But then we've got other fears which we do get into them, and they are the irrational fears. Fears. There are no real fears. And although they are irrational, the person that actually feels or experiences those fears, they are very much real. So as I see with my clients, so many of us get into fear of not being good enough. 
And that may mean not experienced enough, not beautiful enough, not lovable enough, that not good enough affects so many different people at different levels. Other fears, if not worthy of abundance, of success, of love, or whatever that is for you. And those two underlying a lot of our problems um, that we may come across in our lives. So we may struggle with creating a successful business, but the underlying belief that we've got about ourselves is the fact that we are not worthy of abundance. Hence, for we will continue to sabotage ourselves so that our reality matches our internal beliefs. The same if, let's say, you've got a fear of being not lovable enough, then you will continue to sabotage yourself and you will struggle to create a loving and healthy relationship because your external environment will match what's going on in in terms of your internal beliefs. But those beliefs are irrational, yet they feel very real because the mind believes that those fears are real. And since the brain's number one job is to keep you alive, it will do everything to make sure that you are alive, despite the fact that those fears actually make you very unhappy. So how do we get those uh, past fears or condition into our sphere? So for example, something happened in the past, brain created certain associations, we created certain beliefs about what happened, and we conditioned the brain to behave in a certain way when we face a certain situation so that the next time the brain can protect you. So like when amygdala reacts to a situation or person and and asks the question, is this safe? If you imagine your brain as a filing cabinet, because amygdala is a lot faster than neocortex, which uses the logic and can analyze the situation, but it's slower, So if you imagine your brain as a a filing cabinet, amygdala will go through your past experiences, everything that happened to you, everything that has been said, it's stored in there. And before you even consciously will think about analyzing the situation, the amygdala already went through the catalog of your life and decided, yes, it is, or no, it's fine, based upon everything that happened to you in the past. To give you an example, perhaps when you were six or seven, you had to sing a song in front of the class or a whole school, and you forgot some words, you got a bit embarrassed and stressed, and the whole class laughed at you. And your emotional reaction to that situation was, oh my god, this is really scary, I'm so embarrassed, I hate this, I can't do it. And since the mind's number one job is to keep you safe, it will go, it will have a conversation, something along these lines like, okay, I get you, girl. This was horrendously uncomfortable for you. I will make sure that this will never ever happen to you. So then, let's say you've got a business and you want to create masterclasses or webinars present to a large number of people, but you can't do it because even the thought of doing something like this sends your body through the whole fight or fight response because the amygdala, even when you're thinking about this, asks the question, is this safe? And then goes back to that situation in the past. And since the brain says, okay, I got you, girl, I'm gonna make sure that you are safe, created that belief that being visible is not safe because your emotional response to that situation was so strong that now you've got this belief that being visible is not safe and you've got this fear of being visible and that fear, that fight or flight response is keeping you safe. So it is irrational fear because nothing will happen if you pop on a Zoom or if you present at a large venue in front of the people, you're not going to die, nothing will happen even if you get embarrassed. But the fear feels very, very real to you. So what's really important, I think, to remember is the fact that we don't consciously go into fear. It's subconscious, automatic response, brain response 
to the real or perceived threat. And as we go into that response, the neocortex then will rationalize the fear because it's slower didn't have time to tell the amygdala this is safe. But since we got into that fear, the neocortex will rationalize the fear. So on one hand, this is very much needed because there are going to be situations in life that probably this is going to save your life. So it's a very much needed response. It comes from the time when we lived in the caves. It seems almost like the brain hasn't quite caught up with the fact that we do not live in the caves and it's safe. But what can you do about it? What you can do is to retrain your brain. And it's going to take a bit of a practice, a bit of a rinse and repeat, because you've learned this over a longer period of time. So... That's what you have to do now. You have to retrain your brain by repeating certain new patterns. So when you face fear that doesn't impose actual real danger, it's one of those irrational fears, what you can do is, one, acknowledge the fear because by shining the light, by saying, hi, I see you fear, I'm not you there, you're trying to get me here, by shining the light, we lower the power of the fear because fear will grow in power in the shadows. When we try to ignore it, it's just going to get stronger. But when we acknowledge the fear, it loses its strength. And then what you can do is disassociate yourself from the fear because the fear is not you. It's the brain response to a real or perceived threat. It's got nothing to do with you. It's just a defense mechanism um, or the brain response, or you can look at this as a tool that you created in the past. So that'll be your past fear, the, the fears created in the past. And then what's really important is to shift what you think about. So not to, not to keep thinking about the fear, not to keep your attention there, because what we keep thinking about multiplies. So first, you want to acknowledge the fear, then you want to disassociate yourself from the fear and then move what you're thinking about. Because the more you concentrate on a fear, the stronger that fear will get. And the more you disassociate yourself from the fear, eventually with time, the power of the fear will get less and less. And it will take some time to retrain your brain. And also... Going back to how the brain works, why is it so important to retrain your brain is because when we constantly face stressful situation or perceived danger, the brain can get into hypervigilance. What that means is that the brain can get stuck in this state of danger, flight or fight response. So there is no real danger happening, but the brain got stuck there. And it's constantly going to flood your body with the hormones. And as you remember, during that time, cortisol is there to switch off things that you don't necessarily need to your survival, like your immune system... So when you face infections or some other health problems, your body will not concentrate on fighting this, on healing your body, because it's far too busy fighting the lion off, so to speak, because you compete with a lion. So because it's such a primal response to a threat, you have to remember that's the primal response from the time when we lived in caves, um, which the real threat was the lion, So if you want to think in those terms, you compete, you've got lion versus infection. Well, you can probably live live with the infection for a long time before it's actually going to do some serious damage. Where if lion gets you, well, that's kind of a done job. So in those situations, the brain will concentrate on a lion, not on an infection. And being in this hyper vigilant state is really not good to us. So I hope that was really helpful. It helped you to understand the fear is a biological, automatic brain response to a real or imagined threat. 
And once you learn center certain patterns and association, if you're not going to get on top of those fears, is is they are going to take over your life. So I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you've got any questions about that, you can always send me a message on a Instagram or uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I will happily respond and I see you next time. Thank you for listening. If you found value in this podcast, I would like to ask you to leave a positive review explaining how this episode helped you to improve your life. I ask you to do this because this will help all the people to improve their lives as well. Share and spread the love all around you. Raise your vibrations to improve your life. If you would like more transformational content like this, connect with me on Instagram. You can find a link in the description of this podcast and I'll see you over in the next episode.